Because you're about to start at 45. Yeah, soon, but I just saw like all the equipment came this morning. Alright. So we had to like pull it off the street in the city. You did? Unload the crates. You caused the ruckus in the city? Oh. And then we had to crack the crates on the street. People are messaging you like every day, bro. When are you coming back? What's going on? Like, they really care. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Like I tell you, a lot of them are. That's why it's hard. A lot of them are Raiders fans, too. Yeah. They're so good, so supportive. But yeah, I mean, there was always support there. Once the public perception turned around, it helped. But yeah, people. I don't know how I will one day, but. It's, Try and get there. It'll be important to try and project just how meaningful that is, you know, getting that constant support. Not that I live for it or need it or worry about the negative comments, but yeah. it's people probably think that when they say stuff like that it goes on deaf ears, but you know, it's it's great. It's, I have, you know, I just need to find the right way to project how grateful I am at some point, you know what I mean? Lower body session, second session of the week. Um, when I cue my coaching, um, I break down two sessions, a push and a pull, you guys know that, okay? So the first sessions, the first movement is always an explosive movement. I'm not going to go too much detail about programming, I've kind of gone over it as we go on. My first session is always a power movement, so it could be a lift, a jump, a throw. My second movement is normally like a sprinting, high velocity based movement, but I've done more um, Olympic lifting first, and the second movement's more of a, it's, it's, it's not a plyometric movement, it's a jump, okay? So that's my, today we're gonna do a single leg broad jump plus stick. Yep. Trap bar, deadlift, low handles, we're gonna go heavy, Bulgarians, as you know, supplementary, play push away, a bit of running, excel, decel to finish, okay? We've got a bit of technique work, lateral speed, I'm gonna show you guys that you haven't seen, it's called one, two, stick today. Um, if you run out there, agility versus change of direction, I want you to remember, agility is not running around cones, it's not a predetermined path of movement, it's got to be, it's a reactive component, okay? So you respond to the outside stimulus. So true agility is on-field agility. You're never really going to, um, agility has to be reactive. Change direction is closed. It's a predetermined path of movement. So when you do cone drills, you know where you're moving to. That's change of direction. Always coach change of direction before agility um, when you're doing reactive work. Now, um, the best way you can improve your um, agility is through improving relative strength. Um, improving your ability to accelerate, decelerate, and also improving your sporting age because if you read the play better, you're going to be in a better position. Everyone always goes, oh, he's got better agility. No, he doesn't. He just reads the play better. That's why I look at it thing. Um, agility is something that's kind of bastardized in this industry where everyone's talking about fast feet ladders and um, cone drills. That's not agility, that's change of direction. Um, in my opinion, the best way to improve your on-field agility is just improve your sporting age and then add cognitive drills, visual drills, um, audible, audible drills, stuff like that. Um, that's the best way to improve agility. Anything reactive responding to an outside stimulus. I'm gonna show you one, two stick here. We did this at Maryland, now he's at Colorado. So a big shout out to, to uh, Coach Wilson, Coach Weber, and Coach uh, Trent Clausen for helping me out, especially when I was over there. It taught me so much. All right, now, when we coach change direction with lateral speed, so we've got two types of speed, linear speed, straight line, and lateral speed. Okay? Now we know for a field based sport athlete, a team based sport athlete, you're a multi directional field based sport athlete, so you're never running in a straight line, there's always change of direction. So you need to coach both to create a real well rounded neuromuscular profile. So we've got these just as coaching, coaching cues, coaching drills, you don't need them, uh, but we're going to use them with Shandor to start just to give them an understanding, right? It's called one two stick. The first, we've got power, posture arm, uh, sorry, power in terms of the acronym. Push to move, athletic based listener of gravity. The first one, is push to move. So when we're going to our right, we push off our left. When we're going to our left, we push off our right. So we abduct and use our glutes. The second one, athletic base. So we're going to keep a low athletic base. Okay, feet for the part. The third one, L, low center of gravity. You want to stay low when you change direction. You never want to change direction up high, you want to change it low. So I'll show you how we're going to do here. Going to our right, one, two, stick. One, two, hold the stick, get used to it. And then abduct, really push. And it's, as I said, the circles are there, just as a cue to understand where to put your feet, you're going to abduct. And then, the cue that I like to use is push your heels away from the earth. Bang, abduct, bang. I want you guys at home to try this, right? 
a lot of athletes, when they chase direction, they pull. So this muscle group here is the adductor magnus. It's only small. So what they do is when they go to the right, they pull like that. The way I see it is when you push, you're using, and you abduct, so going right, you're gonna push off your left like that, using a bigger muscle group, which is your glutes. Okay, now we all know how powerful the glutes are. The glutes are critical for athlete performance and injury reduction. So I want you guys to try at home how you get more distance if you pull or if you push. Push. And of course it makes sense to push and use a bigger muscle group. It's more safe, it, it's safer as well in my opinion. We've been killing this for years, it works really well. So very confident in your bilateral stuff. We're push. starting to integrate more single leg work. Push. I'm not gonna go on my push. rant about single leg training, so push. it's for another time. Um, but I find the value in single leg training for imbalances yep. and stability because you spend most of your time Correct. Correct. single leg. Yep. I'm not talking about sport specific drills, which you yeah. don't like. Yeah, yeah. No, so you gotta think when you play sport, you play sport with one foot up, one foot down. So it's a closed connect chain, open connect chain event. So it's very important you do hit your supplement, supplementary single leg work. So we're gonna do a single leg jump now. It's single leg broad jump plus stick. So all he's gonna do, so he's progressed on from double leg bounding plus stick, double leg bounding continuous. Now you're gonna go single leg bounding. Nice. Good. Good, nice. So you can see there he's just controlling it. You really wanna emphasize, and the stick's a big one because a lot of the time athletes get injured when they're landing or decelerating, so they need that eccentric strength to absorb the force, control the landing. So you always want to emphasize, as we talk about landing mechanics and um, deceleration mechanics, because it's critical for not only performance, but also injury reduction as well. So. This isn't stuff. I haven't done a lot of, a lot of jumping, even double legs, so yeah. it's good. It doesn't, it feels like a challenge. Yeah, it's hard, it's not easy, it's not easy. Do you see when he lands, sometimes his knees come in a little bit, a slightly. To the untrained eye, you might not see it, but it's just slightly bit of valgus stimulation when knock knees. So that's why I keep cueing. The cue that I like to use, and you guys see it a lot where we use our bands above the knee, is to facilitate the band. When the band brings you in when you come in. So that gives you the awareness to push your knees out, abduct, switch on your glutes, because when you push your knees out against the band, it's creating torque at the hips, your glute meat stabilizing the hips, which is critical. But also another muscle group which I'm going to talk to you about now, which is really important, is actually this muscle group here. So you've got four muscles of the quad, vastus lateralis, rectus femoris, vastus intermedialis, and vastus medialis, which is this one here, your VMO, right? It's critical because it's, a lot of people get patella femoral, and I explain patella tracking is what happens is, anyone out there has had patella oh, jumper's knee, patella femoral, patella tracking, whatever you want to call it is, when the patella tracks this way laterally because the glutes, there's two reasons. One, the VMO doesn't switch on and the glutes don't st uh, stabilize the hips so the glutes don't switch on. So the VL takes the load and pulls the patella laterally. I've had it for years, or I had it for years when I played football. Yes, I played football. And it pulled it across. And then what fixed it for me was, it's funny, because when I used to see um, a lot of um, uh, other allied health professionals, I'm not naming anyone, but I used to see a few other allied health professionals, what would happen was they'd give me all these TKEs, like, which is fine, which is great, but it's not really fixing the root cause with the fact my glutes were inhibited or downregulated. Once I started switching on my glutes through abduction, extension, external rotation with a minivan, the pain went away hmm. because my glutes switched on, stabilized the hip, and I hit my VMO, which is critical to stabilize the patella, no issues. Okay, so that's where it's really important to hit those both areas. Hit your VMO, hit your glutes. So how do you see that relating to the jump you just saw? Because when he's landing, he's stable and he's landing. He's hardly getting any... Normally what you'd see is someone who jumps like that single leg, massive instability, and their knee would come in and collapse. With him, you look at his VMO. Good, extend. Look at that. See, do you see how big that is, guys? It's ridiculous. Now look at mine. Pretty big, eh? Okay, so I just talked while Shandor's warming up. We have a few warm-up sets, neural ramping sets. Um, I'm going to show you guys a movement we use to hit the VMO. I explained the importance of the VMO before. Um, the, muscle, uh, the muscle, the medial head of the quadricep to stabilize the patella. The knee, put this behind your knee. It's called terminal knee extensions. Hands on your hips. There's a few ways you can do it. This is how I coach it. Balls of your feet to your heel and extend your knee and you squeeze that medial portion of the head of the quad, uh, quadricep. And again, coming up, pulls your feet, coming down, squeezing. Now there's another way you can do it, keep your heels flat, flex, and then just extend. Flex, and just extend like that. There are two ways you can really hit your VMO um, and two movements I use. Who would you give them to? What type of people? Anyone, any field court-based sport that's critical for preventing knee injuries. Really important. Done. Yeah. Um, go 160, tens each side. First set will be 170 for six. I think it's perfect, man. Personally, trap bar. I think everyone should just bring it in as their intro into dens instead of people just trying to. Yeah, get agreed. Into fun. Agreed. I've said. Yeah, I've said this. The, they, the should guy, be, they should be in gyms. Guys, been hanging around me a long time. <laughs> he's right. He's right though. You're actually 100% on the money. 
what they should be doing is bringing a lot of trap bars instead of people going straight to like a straight bar where they got poor mobility, poor body awareness. Yeah. You can't fuck this up, man. It's hard, man. Like, even for I'm a straight. I, I, you know what I've done with my programming? You've kind of you know got to me with that. I've just trap bar now. I just like it better now. I don't know why, mate. You're right. When, when we had, we had a discussion about this, I'm not saying like for everyone out there, like it's not a bad thing. If you want a straight bar, it's up to you. But him and I had a discussion. I just really like it. And you know, to overload. Exactly what Shan said. We just flip the handles. We've made that we need more range of motion to the hips and the ankles. Let's overload the movement. Long, more, more range to pull it up. Let's go. Just a single at 160. Tighten up. Press. Yeah, nice. Good. Right, that was the other point too. Why this is in a way harder than conventional because when, when it's at the front, as you come up, your, your hip drive does a lot of the work. Yeah. Like conventional deadlift. Yeah. With this, you don't get that. Yeah. You're still uh, trying to get it out from here. Well, because your center of gravity is inside. Right here, you can pop yeah. through yeah. and you can bring it, you can bring it up yeah. to the leverage. But I find it with the low bar trap, fuck, you get a sticking point in the yeah. middle rather than it getting easier. Pick that weight off what I felt like you could do. So if you looked at that movement, you always want to save reps in the tank. You never want to have grinding out reps. Okay, that's what I feel. You never want to miss reps, ever. Unless you're testing. I understand if you're testing, but you should be training not training strength, not testing. They're not strength sport athletes. So I really think you should be always leaving a few reps in the tank. You can see his, his bar speed, even though he wouldn't feel it, his bar speed externally, which we saw, was very good. Okay, you always want that intent on the bar to move the bar quick. You don't want to be grinding out reps. So, it was good that I could see that rep. I picked that weight. So that was perfect. That was bang on perfect. You wouldn't want any more than that? Probably no less than that either. That's a, that's a really good weight for you. Okay, and when we talk about auto regulation, I think I've talked about this before. Everyone talks, what should you do? Should you percentage base it? Should you, um, should you auto regulate it? I think the best way for non strength sport athletes, remember I train non strength, I don't train strength sport athletes, so you'd have to. You know, guys like, the um, guy used to work here, JP Couch. If, you wanna, if, you, if you're interested in strength sport training, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, CrossFit, um, all that type of sport. I'd, I'd follow powerlifting JP Couchy. He's probably the man in Australia. He used to work at Woodford. Um, he's very good at it. So if you want to, it's a, there's a big difference between the two. So I'm really big on auto regulation, um, regulating based on how the athlete feels. Remember, this is not their sport. This has to work around their sport. So you have times where they're tired. There's more stresses than just their sport. There's external stress as well, work, um, family. So you've got, to, you've got to cater for that inside their program and the load that you choose for them. So just. It's really good that you might have a, a certain load predicted for them, but if they, you know, if they've, they've fought with their missus or they've had an issue at a job, that's stress that's built up. So, there's you got to understand that that's the art of being a coach. So you can't really learn that in the textbook. You just got to learn by doing it. Yep. Bringing back to injury, this is an important part about injury, right? How many people do you guys know that get injured? For you as well, and do fuck all. They do nothing. Now, I want you to think about it this way, right? Let's say Shandor for two weeks, you did nothing, right? You sat on your ass and said, nah, fuck it, I'm injured. I'm not gonna do anything, right? But what, we, what you did, and this is why his attitude's so different to everyone else, and a lot of my athletes like this is, you have to keep some sort of load to their body. So when they come back, they're not so far behind. You can't lose steps, okay? So as long as you maintain it, for him, we maintain strength. Because you're not training strength, you're losing it. We know strength facilitates everything. Power, speed, agility, work capacity, efficiency. So all I did was I modified the lift based on how he felt. And that's what a rehab program should be. So it's very important out there, if you do get injured, don't do fuck all, but if you're gonna go back, and you, I don't care if I swear with that, sorry mum, but you don't wanna do fuck all, you don't wanna go back too far, you need to be doing something, if you modified it. What we did with Shandor, he had a little bit of tweak with his hamstring, we modified around his hamstring. A tweak. Hamstring. You got him. Tweak around his hair. I'm gonna get you fucking back for that. I'm gonna get you back for that, it's gonna fucking hurt. It's really right. important to understand as a performance coach, the force velocity curve. Now, in short, the force velocity curve, and I've, this is at my course, force velocity curve, why it's so important when developing power and speed. I want you to think it's a very important neuromuscular relationship to understand as a performance coach, or for any coach developing athletes. Um, I want you to think the force velocity curve is um, a relationship between force output and speed movement. So look at this. The higher the force, the lower the velocity. So if we're looking for high force, low velocity, we're going to do our heavy two, three, four RM squatting, deadlifting, you know, your, your traditional strength movements. And if we look at the other end of the curve, pure high, high velocity, low force, we're looking at your, your, your max effort sprints, your short, you know, 10, 20 minute acceleration efforts, the high velocity, low force. So the whole idea about developing the force velocity curve for the athlete is shift the curve to right where greater force is produced over quicker movement speeds, okay? So you're, you're producing high amount of force quicker. That's the whole idea, shift the curve to the right. And that's when I work off everything here. And you wanna call it, I call it surfing the curve. So you can hit different parts of the curve depending on your loading parameters. So 
depending on your load power relationship and there's no optimal load power relationship it depends on the athlete's training status so you can't ever have an optimal load ever never ever depending on what you're trying to develop and it's the athlete's always in flux between positive and negative adaptation between fitness and fatigue let's say you get a novice we know for a fact a novice if they improve their force they can improve their force across the entire force velocity curve slow velocity strength and fast velocity strength okay but in terms of power adaptation, you need a mixed method, mixed method, multifactorial approach. I've got a five. I've got five areas to maximal neuromuscular strength, uh, maximal neuromuscular power development. I've got five areas. And if you come to my workshop, I'll teach you it. That's all I'll give you there. Stay stable. Push. Here we go. Ten. Forty season starts this week. Forty. What do you mean? Rugby league. You call that forty as well? Yeah. Confusing me, man. <laughs> you watching it? Yeah. It's a lot easier to watch this year. Because you come. Good. Yeah, it would be. Watching competition now. I'm interested. Yeah. Yeah. He's scouting. Better than the last. Last few years has been hard to watch. Do you have a favourite besides your hometown that you want to play for? Yeah, I like Canberra, but I suppose. I'm interested to watch, you know, the Storm Raiders, any of those teams. I won't watch every game, but it's interesting to try and force myself to start watching games and thinking like watching players, watch what they do. Yeah, you're scouting. At training, we have actually a good setup. I'm not sure what the system's called, but you can go on and have access to like every play. You can break it down like every time they pick up the ball, every time they run. You can no, just 20, watch, 60, 50, 50, 50. so I can say yeah. pick a player and say, I want to watch every time he ran the ball, or every time he Well, you can do that. Yeah, it's a program. That's, that's really cool. Sick. Yeah, it's awesome. So you can scout your position. Yeah, so like that's next level. But Anyone can access it, or it's no, only no, the team? It's at the club, yeah. You can go in and watch it. Like, something I now look back and think, could have done a lot more of that. I'm just going to do two sets of um, five, just a few different types of acceleration starts. Yep. So, just to promote. So whether I off the floor, yep. falling start, rolling start, just do a couple, five, and have a break. Gotcha. I like it. Like I said to you, once I get some structure, it's about finding a slot for working on pure speed. Yep. Mailing my gym stuff and finding a slot for that conditioning. Really, you already have the slot of conditioning, though. Yeah. You just need, but not here. This isn't conditioning. It's a bit of general stuff at the end, you know. But that one conditioning running session. A separate session, yeah. One sprint session. Yep. My gym sessions. And four time, four gym sessions. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to be doing. I'd love to train every second of the day, but if I have the lifestyle I have, running the business and completing that for the next four to six months, mate, we're I'm happy, you know. So what's the goal? And then when I get finally when I get a job after six months, I'll have some cash. I'll be able to look after myself. Maybe get a massage. <laughs> so just quickly, what do we he's got? Ru he's running late. So he's running late, and he sticks it to me when I'm late. So I'm gonna really stick it to him while he's late. You're right asleep. Now. How was I asleep? You're asleep when I called you. Wait, and also quickly, I want to I want to poll right now. I want you guys to comment. Do I look like a Goanna? Goanna Woodford! I'm starting to do my head in because <laughs> I got a few people messaging me calling me Goanna. So I want to poll. I want you guys to comment. Hold on. I want you guys to comment. Do I look like a Goanna? Because I probably do. So, uh. Oi, 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 oi. Good chin. Goanna. You don't need to do that. Just be normal. No, I don't. I don't have to be normal. But just comment if you think Goanna. I just you sponsored? Oh, oh Yeezys! Not sponsored, I've got ye old Yeezys. Look at that. No sponsorship there. Look at these socks. Come on, bro. Boy, just quickly. You're waiting for Nike the contract. You're waiting for the contract to get some new waiting. socks. If Nike want to sponsor me. Nike, Nike ain't watching this. No, Nike's Nike, not watching. Nike ain't watching this. Wait, who, who was your former um, sponsor? Um, I, I've already had um, these guys do it, so I don't care. But if you guys want to sponsor me again, Bring the contract. Sponsor the uh, sponsor the the episodes. The the yeah, return. Right, actually, you, yeah, we should get someone to sponsor the episodes. Thousands of views right there. Should, should we get someone to sponsor? Do that, this serious question as well. 
Does it hamper you? You got real shit tats, and like, does that hamper you? Or? No, when I come in, look at yours every day. I, I just always want to know, like, you got pretty crap tats. Like, is there? Can, it's a serious question though, I'm actually asking a serious question. Serious question. I hate when he gives me shit about my tats. Can you show everyone the party time? They got me. Party time got me. Why, why is Boy, it, look at the king of the jungle right here. Why is it party time? Look at the big scratch. That big scratch. G Wood loves them. Tell ya. Oh, oh dad, do you like my tats? Oh, hang on. Oh, there you go. <laughs>